All right, so let me go to the screen share. Turn on the light so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so these are stoichiometry problems. And for most people, the hardest part is to write the balance equation. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through these. So for number one, so I'm going to leave this here. It says, what mass of nickel? Now, what you can do, I'm only going to do this on the first one, but to help you write the equation, you can literally put the words there. So what mass of nickel two hydroxide is formed? So if you're having a little trouble, put it in your intermediate step. Is formed from the reaction of sodium hydroxide. I'm going to write it. Well, I, I give, I have plenty of room. with nickel two chloride. All right, and so then, whoops. You can start writing formulas. And so sodium hydroxide, Na plus, OH minus, nickel two chloride, Ni two plus, Cl minus, here, your product has nickel two hydroxide. And then you can look at this and obviously we need the sodium and the, high, and the chloride on the other side because you see these are gone, right? So that means I'm gonna have sodium chloride. And so that would help you recognize, oh, this is a double replacement reaction. So then you could write the reaction NaOH, NiCl2, NiOH2 and NaCl. And then we need to balance this. The balancing part is usually easy. Okay, so then the question is, we have 8.65 grams of sodium hydroxide. We wanna find the mass. And over the years, as I've been teaching this forever, I found that doing little things like mapping it out like this is very, very helpful. Because at this point, it just becomes stoichiometry. So I'm gonna start the problem, 8.65 grams of sodium hydroxide. And no matter how good you are at this, always, always, always write down the units of the answer before you get started, because it's really easy to answer the wrong question. And so at this point, it's, just, it's doing dimensional analysis. So what we want to do is we want to get to moles. So we use the molar mass. Molar mass of sodium hydroxide is 40, or if you carry a few more digits, 39.997. I always have students ask, well, how do you just know that off the top of your head? It's because I figured it out 800 times. Wait, you think you look something up 50 times, you don't need to look it up 51, right? All right, and so then we want to go to moles of nickel hydroxide. So one mole. And there's two moles of sodium hydroxide. And I always cancel as I go, and now we just need the molar mass. So this is where I got to use my calculator here. Nickel is 58.69. So I get 92.70. And I, I can't, you know, you guys have been really good about your scratch paper. And these kinds of problems are re, it's even more important because it's so easy to make a little mistake, like have get a molar mass wrong. And sometimes on tests, I'll give you a molar mass on a problem or so just to, because I know they take time. I give you a molar mass, use it. So this comes out to be 10.0. Let me double check my math. Don't forget about sig figs. This has three sig figs. Yeah, 10.0. 
grams of nickel hydroxide. All right. Uh, professor, I had a question. Uh huh. So earlier in the problem, when you did nickel and the hydroxide and you crossed them out, um, what did that, how did that affect the equation below? Oh, no, I just, I just crossed those out because I had them over here and I just wanted you to see that I don't, I, before that, I didn't have the sodium and chloride over here. Oh, okay. I was just trying to help people realize, hey, how do I know I'm going to have sodium chloride? Oh, okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, because sometimes I don't tell you the other product. You know, some types mm -hmm. of equations like double replacements and single replacements, you're responsible for being able to predict products. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to kind of just do use the space the best I can. Number two says, how many phosphoric acid that should be plural molecules will take to neutralize? So I try to use some different words to get you guys used to different words. Neutralize just means react with. So we're going to have phosphoric acid. So this is a nomenclature thing, phosphoric acid. So phosphoric maybe comes from phosphate. And so if you have trouble with the nomenclature, that's why you should review it. And nomenclature is not easy. So and it's reacting with calcium hydroxide. And again, this is really a double replacement. Acid-base reactions are double replacement reactions. So this is, you need to do this, H plus, PO4, Ca2 plus, OH. So the products are gonna be the H plus with the OH and the CA with the phosphate. So that'll be H2O. If you want to write water as HOH, that's okay. That's how organic chemists write it. All right, and then to balance this, we're going to need a three here and a six here and a two there. All right, that's the process for getting this equation written and balanced. I'm going to erase the ions below just so I can write the question. So the question is we have 17.84 grams of calcium hydroxide and we're asked molecules. All right, so now again in the interest of space, whoops. I'm gonna just erase the stuff up here and we'll solve number two up here. Whoops. So always, you always wanna to go to the, towards the question mark. So I'll just go, whoops, what did I just do? It's not over here. Okay. So we are going to start with 17.84 grams of calcium hydroxide. And we want to find H3PO4 molecules. All right, so the first thing we have to do is we have to get to moles. So we're gonna need the molar mass of calcium hydroxide. So, whoops. So this is 74.09. So we have one mole of calcium hydroxide. 74, and again, you want to verify for yourself that you can get these molar masses. I'm, I'm going to carry out an extra digit. That's because I know a lot of these numbers a little bit further. So now we want to get to H3PO4, so we're going to use the balanced equation, right? We're going to do this. We know from the balanced equation that there are two moles of H3PO4 for every three moles of calcium hydroxide. Again, cancel as you go. And we want to get to molecules, so we're going to use Avogadro's number.
I'm not going to write molecules because of space. And so that should work. And I did see on the last test, a couple people were still having some calculator issues. So you want to fix that. This should be 9.667 times 10 to the, I got 22nd. That's a nine. Can you explain how you calculated that? On my calculator? Uh-huh. Yeah, so I went 17.84 divided by 74.095 times two divided by three times Avogadro's number. And remember Avogadro's number, you wanna enter it like this. Depending on your calculator, there's an E, e or a double E or an EXP. That's how you would enter Avogadro's number. Does that help? Hopefully that's, if I, you guys got a different answer, let me know because I, sometimes I push buttons wrong. All right, let me go to three. Professor, can you explain how you knew how to use the two mole H3PO4? Absolutely. For so if you look down here at the balanced equation, right, you see we have moles of calcium hydroxide. We need to get to phosphoric acid, right? So we know from the balanced equation, that there are two moles of phosphoric acid for three moles of calcium hydroxide from the balanced equation. Did that answer it? Yes. Yeah. So if 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 we needed to get to let's say um, water molecules, would we use six? Absolutely. Yeah, I see. Yeah, that's what the coefficients are. That's why you balance an equation. All right, let me do number three. Number three is a little confusing at first. So um, you're told you have a mixture that has lead and copper, but you also said, see the copper doesn't react, requires hydrochloric acid to react with all of the lead. So you're gonna have, the, it's only the lead that's reacting. So lead is reacting with hydrochloric acid. So remember a hydro means it's a binary acid. Now, it's forming, it tells you here, the lead forms lead 2 chloride. So it's going to be PbCl2. So this is a single replacement reaction. So single replacements, remember the metal is going to replace a metal. So hydrogen in an acid, hydrogen is a metal. And if you didn't realize that, the other hint in the problem is you're told this is one of the products. But since there's no H on the right, it's got to be H. And hydrogen, remember the gens, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and the halogens, which are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, are diatomic, meaning if they're by themselves, they're a two. To balance this, we need a two here. Now, what are we trying to figure out in this problem? Let me just erase this. In this problem, it says we want the percent lead in the mixture. So the percent lead. is going to be the mass of lead, grams of lead, over grams of the mixture times 100. But well, we have the mass of the mixture. The mass of the mixture is 75.4. So we need the mass of the lead, and then we'll have this problem solved. All right, and so we're, the other thing we're told is we have 12.85 grams of the hydrochloric acid, and we want grams of lead here. So that's what we have to find from the balanced chemical equation. So see how you can kind of work a problem backwards and forwards. If you don't know where to start, then start at the end and say, oh, I, I see, I need to get the grams of lead. Okay, how can I get the grams of lead? The copper is completely uninvolved in this reaction. So now we're gonna say 12.8, Five, that's an eight grams of HCl. And we want to use stoichiometry to get to the grams of lead. And so then we can do the math. Um, 
And if you don't know it, so then we know we can get to moles using the molar mass. We know that one mole of hydrochloric acid. So hydrochloric acid is 35.453 plus 36.461 maybe. That's a four HCl. And see how I try to not, I don't just write moles, but I write moles of what? Because there's a lot of moles here. Now we want to get to lead. And if you weren't sure what to do, kind of answering that earlier question, if you weren't sure the next step, you can say, why well, I can always get grams from the molar mass. I know there's 207 grams of lead, the mole of lead. And so that would tell you that you need moles of lead here in the top and moles of HCl in the bottom. And then from the balanced equation, we have two moles of HCl for one mole of lead. So if you get stuck going forwards, work backwards. And you know, I know I just say that, but learn how to do it. And it, you know, the, the more ways that you have to attack a problem, the better problem solver you'll be. All right, so this seems 36.51, but that's not the answer to the question, right? That number is gonna go here. All right, then we divide that by the mixture. And we'll have three sig figs because of the 75.4. So it's 48.4%. Let's get this extra mess out of here. All right, questions about number three. Yeah, I had a, a real quick question, Professor. Uh huh. So, um, when you wrote out the equation and yeah. you didn't have any of the uh, the moles or anything like that, you mentioned that you know you knew that the H had a two at the end of it. How did you know that? Because those are there's a handful of di diatomic uh, elements that you have to memorize. So the diatomics are uh, the way I teach it. It's all of the gens, right? Hydrogen nitrogen, oxygen, and the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. These are all, when they're uncombined, when they're not combined with something else, when they're by themselves, they're always gonna have a two subscript. Why? Because that's how they exist in nature. Oh. So you gotta just memorize those. Right, right. I, mean, I remember I'm it's the gems, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen. These are the halogens. Oh, so it's just the halogens? That's what the halogens and then hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Uh huh. All right, let me go to number four. At least get the equation. Number four says volume of oxygen gas formed from the decomposition of potassium chlorate. So decomposition, and that means the potassium chlorate, K chlorate is ClO3. It's decomposing. That means that you're gonna get A, A, B becomes A and B. You're also told, you're told one of the products, right? Uh, I'm sorry, you're told it forms oxygen. And in this case, you're told the other product. So you're actually told the products. This is a, we used to make people memorize this decomposition, but this one's, um, we don't make people memorize that anymore. All right, so, so we have a two here, a two here, and a three here. And what you're told, you're asked the volume, but you're also told the density. So we want V equals, okay, I'm gonna erase some of this stuff here. And we're told, Excuse me. Yeah. When, when it decomposes, what happens to the third oxygen atom? Uh, you'll see it's that's fixed in the balancing. Oh, okay. okay. Oxygen's on each side. 
Okay. All right. And then you're told the density of oxygen is 1.308. So you said if, uh, in this case, it gives you both reactions. Yeah, you're not, there's only four decompositions that you're responsible for, and this isn't one of them. Remember, there's those four decompositions that we went through with the uh, ionic equations. Uh -huh. Yeah, so this one, I told you with this one, we told you both products. Okay, so if we don't know both products, we just look at that list. Um, you're, you're always going to be, there's going to be enough information for you to come up with the, uh, with the products, either like in a double replacement, you should be able to figure it out, a single replacement, you should figure it out. Something like this, I told you what the products are. Yes. So the answer to your question is, yeah, there's only four decompositions that you're responsible for. And those are in the notes. I can go, I can remind you of them later, but I, I want to get through this problem right now. I think I did I answer your question. Yeah. Okay. So now this one, the question is what volume, right? And so we want to find what would be a good unit for volume here. I'm going to put it way down here because I want to use the top for number five in a minute. All right, so a good unit of volume would be liters, right? And the reason I'm choosing that is I was given that. So that means I know right away one point, I'm sorry, I want liters on the top. One liter is 1.308 grams of oxygen. You're told you're gonna, so now we know when you have two, we're always going towards the question mark right? The question was volume equals. And then I got these two numbers. So I've used this one. So now I know I'm going to start with the 5.90. All right. And now I can just plug away. Right away, you should almost be a reflex. If you're not in moles, get to moles. One mole of KClO3 is 122.55, I think. And now we want to, don't necessarily know what to do here, but I do know grams of oxygen has to go away and I can always use the molar mass to get rid of grams, 32 grams of oxygen, the mole of oxygen. And again, I'm kind of going forwards, backwards, just to show you how to go forwards and backwards. If you're more comfortable only going forwards, then only go forwards. If you're more comfortable only going backwards, then I'm trying to illustrate that if you get stuck one way, you can go the other way and just play with the units and make the units work. I don't know what to do next. So I say, well, I can get rid of grams. That's moles. Oh, look, moles and moles. So if I have moles of oxygen on the top, and moles of KClO3 on the bottom, I can make this problem work. And I know those from the balanced equation that there's three moles of oxygen, two moles of KClO3. And now you see my units work. And so 5.9 5 divided by 122.55 times three divided by two times 32 divided by 1.308 is 1.77 liters. All righty. Okay, the last one, this is gonna take a minute. I'm gonna erase the top here. All right, so let's look at number five. Number five says two grams of iron nitrate is reacted with five grams of potassium carbonate. What's the mass of iron three carbonate? So we're gonna have iron nitrate. I'm gonna go ahead and just write the formulas. Iron three nitrate, which is Fe NO3 two is reacted with potassium carbonate K2CO3, you're told you get iron three carbonate, Fe uh, two CO3 three, 
and you need the other product to balance it. And so you can kind of look at it. I don't have K and I don't have NO3. So I showed you some other steps to do to get this. I'm skipping those in this case for time, but you can certainly write down the ions like we've done a number of times. All right, to balance this, we're gonna need a two here. We're gonna need a three here, and we're gonna need a six here. Now we're told we have two grams. We're told we have five grams. And we want to find question mark grams. All right, so that's this problem. I'm going to erase the bottom here. So this problem is a limiting reactant problem. The signature or the fingerprint of a limiting reactant problem is if you're told starting amounts of two materials and you want to find the product. So the way we do this, there's a number of ways to do it. And I think I showed you two ways in the slides. Uh, and there's a lot of other variations on these themes. Uh, I have a colleague teaches it a little bit differently. They're all variations on the same theme. I think the book might do it a little differently than I do too. So if you look at how I do it, the two ways I showed you and the way the book shows you, there's three different ways and you should pick the one that works best for you. I'm going to show you do this the way I do it. So what you need to do, we don't know where to, we don't know which one of these reactants is going to be the limiting reactant. And we don't know if the product is going to depend on the iron or on the, the, the potassium compound. So what we have to do first is find out which reactant is limiting. So what we're going to do is we're going to just get moles of each because we can't compare grams to grams. Oops, that's just the F NO3. That's supposed to be a three here, my bad. But still, this is balanced, right, though. Um, and then we have five grams. I'm gonna just kind of make some space here. And I set it up in a table, and I've said a number of times, you don't have to follow my organizational scheme, but you should definitely be organized in your problem solving. All right, so this molar mass is 241.86. Double check I did that right. Can you walk through how you do that? The molar mass, I took nine times oxygen, three times nitrogen, and one times the iron. Okay. Nine times 16, three times 14, right? And so this comes out to be, so I have, whoops, two divided by 241.86. So I have point, Point zero zero eight two seven moles of the iron three nitrate. Similarly, and I have oxygen times three plus carbon plus two times. Uh, potassium. So you have 138.206 or 21 is fine. All right, so I get 0 0.0362 two moles of potassium carbonate. Now, what I have to do is I pick one arbitrarily, it doesn't matter which, and I find out how many moles of the other I'm gonna need. So from the balanced equation, I know I'm gonna need three moles of K2CO3 for every two moles of the iron. 
And so 0 0.00827 times three divided by two is 0 0.0124. Moles of K2CO3. So I compare these to each other. All right, so if I'm going to use up all of the Fe, all of the iron, I'm going to need this much potassium carbonate. Then I compare how much potassium carbonate I have to how much potassium carbonate I need. And you see, since I have more than I need, right? I have more than I need, this is my excess. This is not my limiting reactant because I have more than I need. I have 36 and I need 12. That means this is my limiting reactant. So then the last step, so all that's now I know where to start. But since I already converted to moles, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna start with the moles. I mean, I could start with grams, but I have to do this step. And since I already did it, And I want to get to the last the question was how many grams All right and then I know from the balance equation that I have one mole of the iron carbonate for every two moles of the iron nitrate And then I'd need the molar mass of this monster. So we have oops. I get two ninety one point seven two. I'm assuming I did these molar masses right. This problem is a little bit more complicated. You can't let a problem intimidate you, just plug away. So I get 1.21 grams. Let me walk you through this one more time, then I'll stop. This yeah, Professor, check. can you explain how you knew how to use the 0 0.00827 moles? Yes. Okay, so let me let me back up and I'll explain that in, in the whole thing. I got the balance equation and I, I kind of write the information about each substance. And then I go, oh my goodness, I have, where do I start? Do I start with the iron or do I start with the potassium? So I have to figure that out. So what I do is I figure out how many moles of each that I have. And now your question, okay? So then I arbitrarily pick one. It doesn't matter which one I pick because there's only two reactants, I check one. It either is or it isn't. If it isn't, then the other one is. So I, I say, if I'm gonna use up all the iron, how much potassium carbonate am I gonna need? Well, from the balance equation, I need three moles of potassium carbonate for every two moles of the iron nitrate. That means to use up 0 0.00827, I'm gonna need this much potassium carbonate. Then I look and see what I have. Well, I have this much potassium carbonate, 0.036. Since I have more than I need, right? I have more than I need, right? 0.036 is greater than 0.012, right? The potassium carbonate. That means since I have more than I need, this is excess. This is not the limiting reactant. Since it's not, this one must be. If you had checked the potassium carbonate, if you'd done the other calculation, you'd find out that you need more than you have. That's how I know I use the iron. Does that answer that question? Since the potassium- Kind of. Kind of. Since I have more potassium carbonate than I need, that means I'm not gonna use the potassium carbonate to solve the problem. I'm gonna use the iron to solve the problem. I'm gonna use whatever I don't have enough of. Then I just do the stoichiometry at the end. All right, so I finished with a minute to spare. I'm gonna close the screen share. I'm gonna stop the recording, but I can answer more questions. I just wanna stop the recording, okay? So let's turn the recording off.